House Financial Services and Agriculture Committees releasing the initial draft of a new bill that seeks to provide a framework for digital asset regulation. Joining us right now on all of this is Congressman French Hill. He's the vice chair of the Financial Services Committee and the chair of the Digital Assets Subcommittee. The congressman is also the co-sponsor of the proposed legislation. And Congressman Hill, thank you for being here today. Let's talk a little bit first about what you think about the SEC's actions against these two exchanges. Well, Becky, it's good to be with you. You know, law enforcement uh, planning and action by the commission takes months to plan and to consider. And I think it just speaks uh, that we have confusion in the marketplace, both in the commodity marketplace and the securities marketplace, about how to uh, have the rules of the road for digital assets. So both the action on Coinbase, on Binance, and of course the collapse, uh, infamous collapse of FTX last year, speak to me that we need this clear, concise statutory framework. That's why we, we've introduced this bill. Uh, and We think it will both bring clarity to the mission of the Securities and Exchange Commission and set up the proper oversight and function for uh, the commodities markets uh, as it relates to digital over at the CFTC. What does it do? What are your proposals do? Should the SEC be allowed to take the actions that they've just taken? Well, I think if we had this bill in place, the SEC wouldn't have to take the actions that they've taken because this bill tells uh, investors, consumers, uh, market innovators in distributed ledger technology and in digital assets how to become a decentralized digital asset company. How do you uh, become a dealer? How are you a broker? How do you do custody for these assets? How do you have a secondary market for these assets? So it lays out that fit for purpose framework that we think uh, is the right way to approach it, both at the SEC and the CFTC, so that there is clarity and we can bring that innovation back to the U.S and that can, people can consider how to do dis, digital asset projects with a framework, with some rules. That will reduce confusion and certainly reduce enforcement actions. Congressman, it's been years. Congress hasn't taken any action on any of this. In the meantime, as you mentioned, we've had the FTX implosion, and now you've got everything that's happening with Binance. I mean, the SEC laid out these charges where it looks like there was some pretty terrible activity taking place. They basically call it a fraud, say that they were moving and commingling funds. They were washing through volume to make it look like they had much higher trades. I mean, this is, this is, these are accusations of flat out fraud while Congress has done nothing to do anything. So is Gary Gensler right to step in and try and fill that void? Well, but, uh, it's, Becky, it's a good question. The question is last year, where was Gary Gensler? He said he was the cop on the beat and he was out prosecuting and condemning Kim Kardashian for promoting crypto, but he didn't take any action, uh, in my view, last year to prevent the FTX uh, matter from taking place, which was <laughs> one of the biggest the frauds we've ever do, seen. Does he have the authority to do that or not? I mean, I think the, the argument has been that he doesn't have the authority. It's yeah. hard to say, why didn't he do something sooner and at the same time say he doesn't have the authority? Well, he's the one who says he has the authority. He's determined in his view that every digital asset that's out there trading a token or otherwise other than Bitcoin, he considers a security. And so he's taking that approach. Others don't believe that to be the case. He's urged people to come in and register, but no one has gotten any satisfactory answers from the commission from that point of view as well. What that tells me is there is confusion. We have this famous Howey test of what's a security and not a security. And what we do in this bill we introduced uh, as a discussion gra draft last Friday is codify that. We actually explain how the Howey test would work for digital assets. What about That'll bring a lot of fraud, clarity. Though? I mean, flat out fraud. We'll find is... out flat out fraud. We already got Well, he's got the authority and he should exercise it on pursuing flat out fraud as he did in the FTX. Yeah. But no one here is excusing fraud or bad behavior. We what we're excuse... suggesting is all these examples all these we, examples indicate that we have to have clear rules of the road. We understand Congress and, you know, look, we all watch it. We all watch what goes on. I mean, <laughs> look at the debt ceiling thing. So we get it. But so what, this is a hot mess, really. It's like a, it's like a dumpster fire. So yeah. it, it, uh, we understand Agreed. it's a wild, wild west crypto. Oh, gee, there's nothing we could have done. But for three years, just you know, watching it just fester and Congress doesn't do anything. Now the SEC, 
you know, I, I'm not going to, you know, totally point fingers at them. I mean, there's plenty of blame to go around. Right. But to sign off on the, the Bitcoin, or I'm sorry, on the Coinbase offering and to say, yeah, we've looked at it. And for anyone who, who bought in, it's like, well, the SEC was there, so they should know. And then to watch it go from $60 billion to the seven billion dollar market cap. Who do we blame? We blame. There's just plenty to go around. It's Congress's fault. It's it's uh, yeah. sort of arbitrary and capricious agencies that deciding when to do something, when not to do it, depending on who's the head of the agency. Whose fault is it? Yeah. So, Joe, this is a, another key question, and it sort of uh, answers Becky's question, which was, look, the SEC approved an S1 for Coinbase to go public. So you can't have it both ways at the SEC. That's my point. And right. that's why I think it's not clear what the rules of the road C are. Congressman, and we've worked on stable. Yeah. Well, can sure, I one, Hey, I apologize. I just want to ask one question about that, because I've taken the position that you have, which is that if the SEC effectively authorizes the IPO of, a, of an exchange, they are to some degree blessing that, that exchange as being OK. However, we also used a different example earlier in the program. Where we said, you know, if uh, you were a lawnmower company, and the lawnmower company uh, went public, it's not clear that the SEC unto itself is blessing, um, you know, how good or bad the lawnmower uh, is that they're selling. And it's very possible, as you know, with many products, actually, there are companies that go public and then sell products that uh, either are false or fraudulent or don't work or something else. And we typically don't look back at the SEC and say, it's your fault. Yeah, fair point. And I, that's why I think both, uh, whether you're arguing either Joe's point or Becky's, that it requires us to change the statute and bring clarity here, because we do want innovation in distributed ledger technology. We want people to have innovation here, not move it offshore. We want it regulated to protect consumers, protect investors, create innovation. And it's clearly not happening under the current securities laws, the current commission.